Yo, what's up, fam, and welcome back to the channel. This is your boy, Brandon Rico. <coughs> I'm sick. Sick of these haters. Nah, nah, for real. Like, I'm really, I'm really sick. I actually didn't post a video last week because of the illnesses that's been going around my house. Um, last week, I had to rush my son into the emergency room. His temperature was crazy, so we found out that he has the flu. And, you know, uh, so we have been just taking care of him and trying to make sure everybody else was good. And in the process, my youngest son actually got the same type of symptoms. So we thought that he had the flu, which he doesn't, thankfully. Um, but it's just been hitting everybody back to back. <laughs> and somehow it worked its way to me. So if my voice sounds crazy throughout this video, I apologize in advance, but that is why. And that's why I wasn't able to post a video for the channel last week. So I definitely appreciate all the support and everything. Um, a lot of you guys hit me up on Instagram and hit me up on the channel. Also, I just figured out that we have a community tab on the channel now so I can post things and um, talk to you guys directly without having to post a full video. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. So today we're gonna get into some macros and automation and how to program them into BeatMaker 3. Um, this is something that's come up a lot. A lot of you guys have asked me how I set up macros and how I do different um, effects live within BeatMaker 3. And this video is gonna go over how I break that stuff down. So in this video, you're gonna learn how to map your MIDI controller with the macros and um, how to record automation for your beats. Now I'm doing this with the Sensor Morph, but you can really do this with any MIDI controller that supports macros whether that's, you know, like the sliders and the knobs and the faders and stuff like that. You can really do these um, with any MIDI controller. These same principles will apply to any MIDI controller that supports macro MIDI controls, uh, MIDI CC out. So first, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you are mapped correctly inside of your MIDI focus actions for Beatmaker 3. And the way that you do that is go into the settings tab over here. And yeah, you go into the settings tab over here go into um, MIDI focus actions, and you make sure that all your macro controls, macro one through 16 are controlled to all of your pads and all of your uh, knobs and faders and everything on your specific device. And the way that you uh, confirm that is going into your macros. You'll go into your macros tab over here and you'll confirm that within this, this window here. So let's say we wanna map a certain macro to a certain pad inside of Beatmaker 3 or a whole instrument inside of Beatmaker 3. So if you want to affect the whole entire instrument, um, you will go into your pads, um, into the bank that you are, want affected, then you go to audio and effects. So within audio and effects, you can then add effects to, um, control all your, your macros and control all your effects live using your macro controls. So right here we have a, let's try, um, try audio effects. So we have audio effects loaded up and we have, and we're going to, we're going to do a show the plugins. So now you have all of these per parameters that you can control using your macro controls uh, and how you get to those, <coughs> excuse me. And how you get to those is going into the show audio unit knobs. So within this window, you'll be able to see all your live control options with inside of that specific, um, with inside of that specific plugin or that specific specific effect. And when you show the audio unit knobs, you can we have that sample there. So in order to assign a, a specific macro, so let's say we want to map. Uh, macro number one to uh, the dry and wet effects on here. All we have to do is double tap on that and that comes up and you can go into macro controls and select your corresponding macro um, control on, on here. So if we wanted to go to macro number one, we will set it to macro number one and then you'll see that it has a um, number one inside of the control. And you can also confirm this by going into back into the macros tab. So you can confirm that by seeing what that does over here. 
in this section here. We are now in the macros tab over to the far left bottom hand corner. And I have that parameter mapped. All right, so let's say I want to affect, let's say I want to affect the uh, tune of that. Within the sampler, like all of these knobs can be mapped to different macros. So if I wanna affect the, the tune of that, um, right now I have it set to um, affect the dry and wet of that, of that effect that I put on there. So what I'll do is double tap that, and you also have the option to map macro controls. All of these knobs and all of these buttons, all of these knobs and all of these buttons can be mapped to any macro that you set. So I have the tune set to macro number two. So you can see in macro number two, I'm going up and down my tune. So you can also go into your macro controls here by pressing those three dots um, of each macro control. And you can see the, the MIDI assignments that they're assigned to. So this is mapped to, macro two is mapped to uh, affect the tune of that sample. So while you're on that bank, you can affect that. And then you can set the minimum. Let's say you don't want this to go past uh, a certain, a certain level of um, tune. So what you would then do is set your minimum. And it will only go as far as you set that macro. So, and it, and it works the same way for, uh, for the maximum. So if you only wanted to go so high, you would take that maximum down and it won't go any higher than what you set. So removing macro controls are just as easy as assigning them. All you have to do is double tap that um, control again and unbind the macro. And uh, let's say you want it to go every, every, you want things to go back to the way they were. You can go ahead and reset that and the tune goes back to normal. And what I did already is actually I added some effects. I added a, a filter to the main track of a track that I already created today. All right, so what I did was actually I uh, mapped uh, macro number 10 to, uh, this is actually macro number 10 here. I mapped the I actually mapped the cutoff to um, macro number ten, and then I mapped the resonation to uh, macro number nine. So you can see that that affects that like that, and then you can see that when I go all the way to um, the bottom, you know, when I go all the way to the minimum of where macro number ten starts, it doesn't take that all the way to the end of that you know to the end like that so um again what i did was go into macros let's go into a different tab to uh, macro 9 and 10. so what i did there is actually i went into macro 9 and uh, macro so i went into macro 10 and then i set the minimum to only go as low as cut it off i only wanted to cut off as low as uh, 151 hertz. When I go all the way down, it'll only go to 151 hertz. And when I go all the way up, it'll go all the way to whatever maximum I set. So from here, you can even see that that affects that real time. 
and I can even add effects. And let's go with um, Fly Tape by MSX Sound. And that's so in that same instance, you can control these the same way with your uh, MIDI controller. So you sh sh um, hit Show Audio Unit Knobs. And then you can see all your parameters that you're able to uh, map macros to and, you know, change on the fly. So here, um, Low Fly Dirt has a noise effect that I really like to use. Um, and you can map that to, I'm going to map that to uh, uh, macro number nine. And you can see that, you know, since macro number nine is um, already all the way up, it affects it immediately. So even after I added that, you can still go into macro number nine and you can affect the maximum um, loudness of that. So you have your macros set. I'm going to show you how to record them into automation. So you have your track automations in this window. You can actually hit them and you can actually uh, draw them in like this using either the Apple Pencil or you can use your finger. You will add the macro effect inside of that window using this so that you can draw them in. So right now we're controlling macro number nine. You can draw them in using something like that. Or you could delete all that and just record it live. And how you record it live is actually going up here into, you see the quantize button over here in the near the measures, um, near the play, pause, and uh, stop button. And you, you'll see A. That stands for the automations. So you want to enable uh, recording automations. So what that will enable is when you uh, hit record, it'll record your macro uh, it'll record your macro controls and watch them automatically write themselves in. So you'll see that. So you can see how that can turn into something crazy real fast and really it's just it's all up to your imagination and what you decide to do with those macro controls and um, using something like this will give a whole lot bigger dynamic to how your beats are displayed and how they're played out using different effects and controlling them real time still having that real tactile feel. Um, using your knobs and your faders and your sliders and stuff like that. And like I said, any of these uh, controls, it, whether it's inside the sampler, inside the mixer, um, all of these, uh, your, your gain and your tune and your pan, all of that stuff can be mapped to any one of these macro controls and uh, manipulated real time recording them just like you do your just like you do your pads and all your drums and stuff like that you can record your macros and your effects the same way inside of beatmaker 3. i know a lot of you already knew this stuff so but you have a whole lot of people who are getting new into beatmaker 3 and um, this is how you record your automations and use your macros inside of beatmaker 3. if this was helpful to you in any way go ahead and hit that like button uh, and if you're not already subscribed go ahead and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything that i post in the future notification squad where y'all at let me know it in the comments let me know how you guys are using your macros and your uh, automations inside of beatmaker 3 and how this workflow is making your beat sound a little bit better because you're able to control effects real time inside your beats. This has been Brandon Rico with another Beatmaker 3 tutorial. Thanks for rocking with me. 
and thanks for rocking with the channel i'm gonna go ahead and get some rest and try to get better so that i can start doing some more videos for you guys i got a lot of stuff planned a lot of gadgets and a lot of um new techniques and tips and tricks that we can use inside of beatmaker 3 as well as some other dope apps so stay tuned for the next video and remember if i can create like this then you can create like this see y'all in the next video peace